Hello and welcome. This is day three of our Excel World Cup boot camp. And today we're going to be talking about letter case, whether text is uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, sentence case, other things like that. Before I dive into that, let me just remind you, if you haven't already, uh, go grab your free cases with the code bootcamp. The link and the code are both going to be in the video description. They are only available until the first battle, which is now only two weeks away. So get them while you can. Uh, but okay, back to today's topic. So this is the idea, text can be uppercase, lowercase, propercase, etc. Main thing to mention is Excel is often case insensitive, but not always. So for example, if you say, is uppercase A equal to lowercase A, it returns true. If you search for an uppercase A in the text ABC, it says, yep, it's right there in the first position. If you X match lowercase A against this text uppercase CBA, it says, yep, it's right there in the third position. Uh, but, and you know, often that makes sense. Like if the thing that I remember you know, this coming up in, in my work years ago is like, uh, which of these names appear somewhere in, uh, somewhere in all this text? And I looked with a case sensitive function, said, okay, these names appear, these names don't. And then later someone came back and said, hang on a second, this name isn't there. It's right there. I said, oh yeah, well, that's all caps. And my, my function is case sensitive. So oops, uh, you can get yourself in trouble that way. So First, let's quickly talk about changing cases. There are three functions that let you do that, upper, lower, and proper. So here's some starting text, wrap it in the lower function, it becomes lowercase. Wrap this in the uh, upper function, it becomes uppercase. Wrap this in proper, proper just means the first letter of every uh, of every word is capitalized and every other word is not. Uh, some people also use sentence case, um, but that's not a native Excel function. Sentence case just meaning the first letter of the sentence is capitalized and everything else is not. Uh, okay, so that's the, the kind of setup. Excel has a mix of case sensitive and case insensitive functions. The first one to kind of emphasize is equals. Uh, in other words, the, the default comparison, if you say, is, is this cell equal to this cell or is this value equal to this value, it is a case insensitive comparison. If you want to make a case sensitive comparison, you can do that using the exact function, as in exact uppercase A, lowercase A is false. Um, then these two are a pair, search and find. Uh, both do kind of this thing. Know, does this string occur within this string? Search does it in a case insensitive way. Find does it in a case sensitive way. Uh, so just be aware that the syntax of those two is otherwise the same. Um, search is also compatible with wildcards. So that's just another difference between the two. We'll talk about wildcards another day this week. Um, but just be aware, uh, you know, if, if you know how to use one of these functions, you know how to use both of them. Probably most of the time you're interested in a case insensitive, so I would recommend using search as your default, but there you go. Uh, then the other thing to mention is lookups and matches. So like I, like I described here, you know, if you X look up a value in a table and you're looking up the lowercase value and it only exists uppercase in the table, that will still return a match. Same if you use, uh, you know, match, VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, any of these things. Um, substitute, uh, interestingly, is case sensitive. Um, that's that's one to be a little bit careful of, especially if you're using the length minus length substitute trick that we touched on a couple of days ago. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit in a minute about code and car. Uh, code and car are basically ways of converting uh, characters to or from ASCII code numbers. I'll, I'll talk more about that when I go into some of the examples. So let's let's dive over to the examples. So th this uh, this is kind of almost a set of exercises today. Um, more than anything else, just to kind of give you a, a sense of how this works. So like, which of these strings are uppercase and lowercase? You can use exact with upper to test that. So in other words, if the string is exactly equal to the uppercase version of the string, that means it's uppercase. If it's exactly equal to the lowercase version of itself, that means it's lowercase. Uh, this is a slightly trickier one. There's a subtlety here. Classify these characters as uppercase, lowercase, or non-letter. The key thing here is that the uppercase and lowercase versions of a non-letter are the same. So you might think you'd do it the same way as here, like if it's exactly equal to its uppercase, so you could say uh, exact this upper of this, and then you could say if that's true, then it's uppercase. So like here it's uppercase, here it's uppercase, here it's not uppercase, here it's not uppercase, but here you've got a space, here you've got a punctuation mark, punctuation mark, and these are all true as well. So actually the, the way that I would do this is first say, do this test. Is the lower version of the test exactly the same as the upper version of the test uh, of the text. If that's the case, then it's not a letter because letters change when you apply upper and lower. Uh, so then you filter out non-letters and then you can use the other test to see if it's uppercase or lowercase. Um, 
then yeah th again this one is just a sort of an exercise oh sorry no the, the the find and search is more of an exercise this one requires a little bit of trickery so if you want to find where these items occur in this list with a case sensitive match and i've included here if you just do an x match it won't work because that is not case sensitive uh, but what you can do as a workaround is you think about saying exact this let's just say compared to this and copy that down only one of those comes out as true and then then you can think of saying x match true against that whoops against that and that'll give you three and that's basically what this formula here does it just says exact this against all of those and x match true against that uh okay at what character do the strings in the first list appear in the second list case sensitive version and case insensitive version again this is just find versus search um this one is a, a good use case for code and car uh, let me skip over that uh wait i think it's all yeah sorry it's all code and car from here on so first thing to show you is the, there is a table of ascii characters um which just means there's there's a list of 256 characters that are a sort of standard basis for lots of things um, characters 48 to 57 from that 255 are the digits 0 to 9 characters 65 to uh, 90 of that are the uppercase letters characters 97 to 122 of that are the lowercase letters um, so what this means is for example if you ever need to create a sequence of all upper or lowercase letters in the alphabet uh, you can do it like this you want a sequence of 26 digits uh, so code takes you from a character to the corresponding number and car takes you in the other direction from the number back to the character so here you can say the code of a is 65 so i want a sequence of 26 numbers starting from 65 which is the code of a that's going to give me up here 65 66 and so on up to 90 and then i want to take the character of each of those uh, and you can do the same thing here just starting from the code of a if you use these a lot you'll get used to the fact that the code of uppercase a is 65 and the code of lowercase a is 97 uh, but you don't have to because you can just write it like this uh, so just just know that basically in this in this table uh, code takes you from the text side to the number side and car takes you from the number side to the text side so then this one is not so much a thing from the battles as like a thing in real life if you ever kind of copy text from the internet these two strings do not match uh, but they look exactly the same you can see it if you flip over and back and look at them in the formula bar nothing is moving uh, the, the kind of simple thing to check for would be does one of them have a trailing space that would explain it but in this case they don't they're the same length so what we can do is we can use uh, Tuesday's trick split them out uh, or yesterday's trick sorry split them out into characters and compare character by character and that lets you see okay this is where it breaks down this thing that looks like a space and this thing that looks like a space are not the same and then you can use character uh, sorry code uh, to convert those to character codes to figure out what's different and the difference is uh, 32 is the is the ascii code for a regular space and 160 is the ascii code for what i think is called a non-breaking space and what, what you'll find very often if you copy text from the internet some or all of the spaces are likely to be non-breaking spaces so if you're ever in a situation where you're like I am convinced that these two things are exactly the same, what's going on, then combining these tricks, splitting this out, and using code and car can help you kind of quite forensically audit what's going on there. So I know I've rushed through a lot today, uh, but obviously it's all here if you want to go and play around with these exercises. The green is a space for you to do it, the blue is, uh, is the solutions. So before I wrap up, let me just show you how this applies to a couple of the, I'm going to go back to a couple of the battles that we uh, battle cases that we touched on before so here for example uh, this was the bonus one of the bonus questions from the semi-final of the excel world championships um, so if we assign a number to each letter so that upper and lowercase a are both one upper and lowercase b are both two and so on what is the sum of the numbers that correspond to all the letters in the case database ignore all non-alphabetic characters so you remember we, do, we did part of this the other day but let's just do it all again now so first we're going to concat all of these together into one big string just because it'll be easier to work with and we're going to upper them because our trick from day one of counting the number of occurrences of a string is case sensitive then we're going to say here uh, i want the code of uppercase a i want a sequence of 26 letters no, sorry 26 numbers starting from there and then i want to take the characters of those 
and that's going to give me my alphabet. And then I want to use the day one trick, the length of this minus the length of what we get if we substitute out from this each letter replaced with blank. That gives you the counts for each one, and then the value of each letter is just a sequence of the first 26 numbers, so the total value is the sum product of that and that, and that's the value you're supposed to get. Uh, and then the other one to mention where this uh, kind of comes up uh, is this uh, Willem's case of passing notes, which I think I, I kind of showed you briefly the other day as well. Um, for this one, you had to cipher letters a certain number, a certain number of characters along. So like shift uh, an X one along, and it become uh, sorry. This this is the encryptor. So shift a W one along, and it becomes an X. Shift a D two along, and it becomes an F, uh, like this. Uh, and then you had to uh, you know, do it for, for bigger things. So this was like a combination of the mid-sequence trick from yesterday to break it down into letters, um, and then uh, we haven't talked about mod yet. That's, uh, that is not a text function, but you're, you're going to learn to love that uh, for anything that, that goes around in a loop. I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, but basically, you, you convert the letter into a code, subtract off 97 to get the, the sort of shift, um, and then subtract off this, and then Write that back into a shift and back into a character. Um, so yeah, that's just another one where uh, where this stuff comes up. All right, run on a little longer today. I said I was going to try to keep them all to ten minutes. Slight fail today, but I did go under yesterday. I'll try to get back to normal tomorrow. That's what I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.